my goodness, man. I just had to block some guy, man, that was uh, harassing one of my subscribers, you know, uh, and harassed another one earlier just because he didn't agree with what most of us were saying on my video about Akeem Olajuwon most likely not being the real all-time block shots leader. First of all, if you read that title, right, that's not a attack, an attack on Akeem Olajuwon. I'm just stating my opinion that I don't think Akeem Olajuwon is the real all-time leader, shot blocks leader uh, in actuality. Maybe, you know, due to the fact that we don't know the numbers before 1973-74 uh, officially, we have to go with what we know. But if you have common sense, you would know that Will Chamberlain and Bill Russell and more than likely Kareem uh, Abdul-Jabbar as well uh, blocked more total shots than uh, Akeem Olajuwon. Now, uh, one of my subscribers, who's a Kim Lajuan fan, said, "Well, that doesn't necessarily make Kareem Abdul-Jabbar a better shot blocker than uh, Kim Lajuan on a per game average." And that's true. Uh, on a per game average, is pr he's probably, I think, Akeem blocked something like three point one shots per game. Uh, Kareem blocked two point six shots per game. Uh, not including the games that are, that aren't. Uh, Noted or, or, or recorded, but uh, if you include those games, he probably blocked between three to four uh, blocks per game those seasons. He's probably somewhere like a, at a 2.8 blocks per game average, so it's probably slightly lower. Okay, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, I, the, the, the point of it being that I don't think that a king blocked more shots than everybody else. Okay, I think it's either. Russell or Chamberlain or Chamberlain and Russell, some combination by a country mile over everybody, then probably Kareem, then probably Nate Thurman, then probably Akeem Olajuwon. That's my opinion anyway. But anyway, people who comment on my videos and, and say stuff like, well, uh, Chamberlain and Russell played in a weak era. I'm so tired of hearing that, man. Like, you know, it's, it's like, Basically, a regurgitated uh, denunciate uh, denunciation of their error. Like it's, it's just something I always hear, and they always say things like, "Well, they only played against six foot four white guys. They didn't double or triple team when he played. And all the serves were six foot five. Uh, what was this giant going against a bunch of midgets?" Uh, you know, they didn't have uh, sophisticated schemes, yada, yada, yada. Okay, this is my response to all this, right? First of all, Will Chamberlain was double and triple team most games, uh, a majority of games, okay? There were some teams that did not double and triple team, team uh, double and triple Will, uh, most notably the Boston Celtics. If you notice, most of the footage earlier in Wilt's career is against the Boston Celtics. You don't see too much footage against the, what was it, the Chicago Packers that Walt Bellamy played on, I believe. You don't see a lot of footage with other teams when he was getting double and triple team. And there also was a such thing called mauling when he played, all right? The players today would not be able to withstand what Wilt went through uh, when he played, all right? There was a game in the early 1960s. I forget the team that he was playing against. I, I can't remember. Maybe it was the Hawks. I, I can't remember whether it was the Hawks at the time that it would have been St. Louis. I can't remember what team it was, but um, he was fouled when they were transitioning from offense to defense by a player. The guy literally punched Will Chamberlain in the mouth. Bent his, what was it, his front teeth backwards? And that injury ultimately uh, affected Will as he got older and led to the intense pain that he felt uh, in his mouth uh, just th the last few weeks or last few months of his life. Um, see, something like that today, it would be 
uh, you know, just all over ESPN, you know, uh, the guy should be banned from the league, yada, yada, yada. Something akin to uh, Kermit Washington, uh, not quite as bad, but something akin to Kermit Washington punching Rudy uh, Tom Jonovich in the, in the face, all right? Um, and that's another thing. That whole era is different. It was more physical, actually, than what we play now. It's far more physical. Okay? And then what are some other things? Uh, this, this, you know, this, this stupid shit that gets regurgitated constantly. Uh, Wilt didn't play against anything but, but six foot five white guys. Okay, first of all, those sizes that you see, you know, like you might see a guy described uh, West Unsell as six seven and two thirty, right? Well, really, those are college weights. Those are the weights and sizes of those guys when they were drafted. Oftentimes, their weight was not updated, but you could clearly see that guys like Oscar Robertson and Wes Sunseld all substantially filled out as they as they got older. Bob Lanier, substantially filled out. I think Bob Lanier was like seven what, seven one or so when he was drafted in two thirty five, two forty. And everybody knows Bob Lanier was a lot heavier than that when he got older. Like he was like two eighty, seven foot two, two eighty. Okay. Uh, one sunset probably was around 260, 260, 270 toward the end of his career. 260, 265 at least, right? Okay, and also, when these guys played, you did not uh, measure them with their shoes on. Those were barefoot height estimates. The NBA didn't start doing the tennis shoes thing until sometime in the 1980s, which they do now. They measure players... In their tennis shoes, which are cushioned, and gives them a, at least an inch, probably an inch and a half in height. Addition. So, a guy like Wes Unsell, who everybody keeps saying was a six seven midget, would be listed as six foot nine. He'd be about the same size as Ben Wallace, and I think Ben Wallace was one of the more def effective defensive players of his era. Was he not? It's ridiculous with some of the things that you guys say. Then, I, then this idiot that I had to block just now, Daryl Sloan, who's uh, one of my favorite subscribers because he's always posting up. He's posting knowledge every time. You know, he's listing players who Will Chamberlain played against. He didn't say multiple times. Okay, Artis Gilmore was in the ABA, but they did play each other against one another in an NBA ABA contest. All right, and Will Chamberlain bo uh, just bodied Artis Gilmore around, who all of us know was probably the second strongest player in NBA history. Robert Parrish said in a December 1992 game, I believe it was, when he first played against Shaquille O'Neal, Shaquille O'Neal's rookie year. Uh, at the time, Parrish was with the Boston Celtics, I think still. Or was, no, 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 no. I think it was the first year that he, no, no, he was still with the Boston Celtics. And he said, that uh, playing against Shaq, that Shaq was more athletic, but Artis Gilmore was stronger. And Chamberlain just muscled Gilmore around. Um, also, he said something about, well, he only played Bob Lanier for, you know, Sparingly, he hardly played against him for only three years of his career. Well, I mean, Bob Lanier came to the league, I think, 1970. All right. Wilt left the league in 1973. But in those three years, you know how many times that Chamberlain and, and Lanier faced off against one another? Even though they were in different conferences? 16 times. 16 times. In today's NBA... They only would have faced each other eight times at the most, excluding the playoffs. The point being, you imbecile, that during Wilt Chamberlain's time, there were like eight to nine to 
17 teams in the league. There are far there are fewer teams. Therefore, you play against players more often. So that's why you're going to see fewer players listed. You simpleton, you dolt, because he's not playing against as many players. But the but the upside of that, he's playing against superior competition due to elimination because of the fact there's not as many teams. Today there's what thirty teams. When Will last laced them up. I think there were seventeen teams in the league. When he first came in the league, there were only eight or nine teams in the league. He played against the best players, night in, night in and night out, like I said. And when I had to block you, I had to block your dumb ass when you said the following, that DeMarcus Cousins is more talented than Walt Bellamy or Artist Gilmore, or artist, uh, Gilmore ever could be. When you say stupid shit like that, that's it for me. You got to get the fuck off my channel. I don't have stupid shit like that up there. You fucking idiot fucking fanboy. The fuck off my channel.